Hello there, and welcome to this Spoiler Alert Level Editor tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make your own levels in Spoiler Alert. So first off, let's select the Level Editor, and then you can choose between a small, medium, and large level. Now for this tutorial I'm just going to go with a medium level. So this is our basic template setup. You can zoom out and in using the scroll wheel or by pressing Ctrl minus and Ctrl plus. So I'm just going to zoom out to give us a better overview of the level. You can also pan the view by either pressing and holding the scroll wheel and moving the mouse or by pressing and holding Ctrl and moving the mouse. As such. Now this here is our player. We can move him by pressing him with the mouse and dragging him around. You'll notice that right now he snaps to the grid. If you want to position him more freely, you can disable the grid by clicking here or pressing shift. So first of all, let's get rid of this template setup. Instead of a grass level, let's make a mariachi level. So instead of grass, let's go with sand. Now, you can erase stuff in the level editor by right-clicking it. So let's start with erasing these platforms by right-clicking them. And now let's replace them with some sand. This is the default category platforms. You'll notice that if you hold your mouse over a tab or a button, you'll get a tooltip telling you what it is. So this contains all the platforms in the game. So let's find some sand to walk on. Now you select an item from the menu by clicking it and now that we have selected this platform, we can place it in the level by clicking where we want it. And this will place the platform exactly where we clicked. So now we're just going to fill the level with lots of, of sand. Now let's say I make a mistake when I position this and you know do something like this. I want to fix this. So you can stop placing platforms by right clicking anywhere and then you can erase the platform by right clicking it. And then you can go back to positioning them by selecting the platform once again from the menu and just keep on placing it by clicking where you want it. and then right click to stop position stuff again. We also want to get rid of these trees and replace them with something else. Now the trees are a type of background element so let's get into the background category. First of all you have the background color that you can change by clicking it. So let's give this level a different background color. Just choose a color by clicking. Now we have five layers of background graphics. The first two here are already assigned to the two layers of trees. So let's erase them by clicking the X buttons. Now we have no background images at all, so let's add some new ones. Now first we're going to select layer 1. And here we have the different types of background images to choose from. So let's start by adding some clouds. Now you add a background image by simply clicking it in the menu. And now we have our clouds. Now right now they're a bit close to the ground so let's raise them 
you can change the position of a background image using these two arrows right here. So let's get them a bit higher up. Now, layer 2 will always be on top of layer 1 and layer 3 will always be on top of layer 2 and so on and so forth. So in this way you can control the chronological order of your background images. So in front of the clouds on layer 2, let's add some cliffs. And on top of them, on layer 3, let's add some TVs. Now you'll see that they're a bit floaty right now, so let's get them to the ground. There we go. So now we have a, a setup for our own custom level here. Now, this is only visual, so let's add some gameplay elements. We have this category right here, enemies, which contains all the enemies in the game. So let's add some cowboys to our mariachi level. Now, the same as with platforms, you just click an enemy, and then click wherever in the level you want it. You can position multiple enemies, or you can stop placing them by right-clicking anywhere. Now, if I playtest this, clicking this button or pressing spacebar, we will now playtest the level. You'll see that the enemy will per default just go into one direction non-stop. So you can stop playtesting again by pressing stop or by pressing escape. Now to remedy this uh, enemy behavior, we can control his movement pattern using this special type of block that you will find in the enemies category. The idea behind this block is that you place it where you want the enemy to turn around. So if we place these two blocks then this enemy will constantly be moving between them. These blocks are only visible when you are editing a level so when we play the level they will be invisible. Let's also add a dead enemy. Now, this looks like we've made an impossible level. So let's fix that so that the player can actually beat this level. You can move an item that you already placed by clicking it and dragging it to where you want it. So let's move this so that we can actually complete the level. Now we can complete this, but it still looks a little bit difficult, so let's move it a bit more. Now we also have this category, the miscellaneous, which contains all the other gameplay elements such as spikes, mushrooms, gold coins, ice blocks, oil, mud, turnaround signs, and power-ups. So let's add a few of these. Now one thing we can do is make a floaty platform that will require the player to jump on a trampoline. So let's add a mushroom for him to jump on. And then when he reaches the platform, let's add some obstacles for him. There we go. Now we also have the decorations category, which contains items that have no gameplay effect but are there to 
enable you to give your level some more visual appeal and make it a bit more interesting to look at. So let's add some of that. There we go. And as you can see, it, this contains all the decorative elements of the game that you usually know. Now one last thing in the miscellaneous category is power-ups. Now you can add the power-up bodies here which will give you the power-up um, depending on what type of body you add. So let's add the fireball power-up. Now as you may know this the way this works is that the player collides with a body and gains the power up that it had. You can only have one type of power up per level. You can also add the mask that unpowers the player. This is not up this is not uh, mandatory but you can do it. So let's do that. Now this will unpower the player. Um, making him lose the fireball power up when he collides with this. And lastly, let's add uh, an enemy that needs to be unkilled with a fireball. Now the last thing I want to address is the settings screen. You can access this by pressing here or by pressing S. This allows you to define some different things. You can define a type of weather for the level. So let's make it rain. You can also make the player start with a power up. And you can see here on the player that if I select a power up he will immediately get it. You can define what type of music to play in the level. You can preview a track by pressing its play icon. So let's go with some mariachi music. Now lastly, you can define what happens when the player beats your level. You can define what type of icon you want to show him. So let's go with this lovely princess. And you can define what type of message you want to greet him with when he reaches the end of your level. So you can go with the default one or you can create your own one. So just click this text field and you can erase the default message. So let's congratulate the player on beating our mariachi level. And then just click anywhere. Now all of this is also documented in the help file which you can reach by clicking here or by pressing F1. This covers everything from platforms to enemies, miscellaneous, decorations, backgrounds, settings, controls and publishing and saving. So on that note, let's save this level by pressing the Save Level button. First of all, you need to give the level a name. So click the text field and type in your name. Now here you have two options. You can save and publish which will save the level locally so that you can play it yourself 
but it will also publish the level directly to Steam Workshop so that other people with spoiler alert can download and play your level. You can also choose to just save it locally, which will just save the level so that you can play it yourself. So let's do that. And then to exit the level editor, you just press escape and press yes. So let's go into custom levels. And here we have our super neat mariachi. So let's play it. And there we go. You can always reload a level that you made back into the level editor by choosing load level and then selecting the level. So if we want to edit something in our level, like say that maybe we wanted a different background color uh, and maybe some different music, then we can do that and we can save the level again. We can save it under a new level, or we can basically just overwrite the old one. So let's do the latter. It will ask us if we want to overwrite because it already exists. So let's do that. And if we play test it, you will see that the new changes have already gone into effect. And that concludes our spoiler alert level editor tutorial. Thank you for watching, and please let me know if you have any questions.